Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Halo World Championship 2018 Finals. It is day two. We've seen a lot of epic matches so far, but we've got one more important match going on right here, which is going to be Renegades versus Wise Gaming. I'm here with Walsh. Walsh, what do you think about this match here? This is a meaningful pool play match. Renegades know they cannot slouch in this one. Even though Renegades are heavily favored in this matchup, one little slip up could mean their world's run would be over. Yeah, and we've seen a few teams have have that road cut short. And yeah, Oxygen teams? Supremacy just a moment ago. I was I was hoping I was like, all right, I want to see a game five series. I want to see this go the distance and in views just cut it short, short and sweet. That could be a very similar thing here with Wise. If Wise catches on fire, just goes absolutely ham. They could destroy the squad. I think something interesting too about Team Infused. We saw them put up a really good fight against Reciprocity, almost take them to game five. They just dominated Oxygen Supremacy. How much further can they go in this tournament? Can they go past that top six? Can they go to the top four? The question is on everyone's mind, but into this game, what everyone's wondering, can Wise Gaming upset Renegades, the number nine seeded team in North America versus Renegades with Lunchbox, Neptune, APG, and Ace, names that have been in the scene for quite some time, and they have had some huge accomplishments. Yeah, names that are over on those banners over at the side station is just these players have so many victories under their belt, and uh, the analyst broke it down so well, kind of saying, hey, you know, you got Neptune as this, this young gun who needs to step it up as Renegade squad, and Gilkey has to step up as kind of one of these, these veterans over on this wise gaming crew. Yeah, Demon D, he was saying they feel confident. They feel like they have what it takes to keep going with this squad. And you know Demon D, he has no fear. We've seen him play in the past. We competed against him back in the day. Has lack of confidence ever been a problem for Demon D? Never, absolutely <laughs> not. So going into this match, you can see their, their crew is feeling pretty good, focused, ready to go. People at home, let us know who you think is going to win. Use the hashtag HaloWC. Let us know in the Twitch chat, Mixer chat, wherever you're watching. If you're watching on Twitter, use that hashtag. Let us know who you think is going to win. Yeah, I, uh, I personally think this is a Renegades victory here. I don't see them slipping in this situation. I don't see them being like, all right, let's just roll through this next one. They, they realize what's at stake. They realize that they cannot lose this match and potentially lose the, uh, ruin their run. Yeah, and both teams, a decent amount of practice, almost practicing every single day leading up to this event. Although Renegades, they were able to practice against a few more of the top teams. They were able to practice against Tox. They were able to practice against uh, Team Envious. So that's going to help them kind of leading, in, leading into this event. They also got to play against Reciprocity. But we are getting underway here. Game number one, capture the flag on Coliseum. Three captures to win. And boy, there is a lot of stuff that can happen because we've got rockets and we've got sniper here on this map. And Neptune, he's got his eyes set straight on that sniper, making his way over towards snipe, going up to top bridge, trying to get some eyes to spot anyone. He's able to get a few shots down on one of the players from Wise Gaming, and it looks like they are able to get that sniper and picks up the headshot on Gilkey. A good start for Renegades. Also know a strong side how much importance the Renegades roster put over on the snipe side of the map. Three of their players all all made their way over there. You had APG flanking down low near Silver slash Maze. I believe it was uh, clearly we saw Neptune over on the top sniper bridge on Catwalk. And then they had one more teammate over on that side. It goes to show the importance of that side of the map and that power weapon. Gilkey able to finish off a kill bottom mid and gets the sticky grenade at that. You gotta love hitting those. Always feels good to take down that player with you. So he's picking up two kills. Demon D, he'll get perfected by Lunchbox. So that sniper is gonna go down. Gilkey trying to stay alive, realizes all of his teammates just fell down. And now he's just gotta be a player to get behind enemy lines. This is such a good location too. I love the fact that he lets the first one slip by. Gets the back smack over on APG. Lays down some shots to the catwalk. And that's going to also create an opportunity for his teammate who's flanking over on Rocket's side. We can see a flagpole here any moment. Takes the sniper, the snapshot to the face of Neptune. Sit down, keep it moving. They are in control. Wise Gaming trying to move up. Another one. Gilkey is on fire, taking down APG. And when you're hitting shots like that, you are feeling so confident. You are going to be making some insane plays. And that's going to be two down for Renegades. Wise Gaming, they're making a move. Gilkey spots a player at his base, gets him down to one shot. It looks like 
that player was able to slip away to go down for Wise Gaming, and now they're running the flag. Yeah, that's a bit unfortunate. Gilkey luckily able to pick off Lunchbox, though, as he was trying to move that flag across the bridge. That was a scary situation. Nebula, however, had a death off the map. Didn't seem like he was shot beforehand, so that must have fell off the pyramid, or I'm not sure exactly what side he fell off, so that is a massive blunder, especially given the kind of control that Wise Gaming have on the map right now. Somebody stop this, man. Gilkey only has one shot left in the sniper. He goes for it. Gonna miss the shot, but still trying to just stay alive. He's dipsy doodling out of dodge, and he's able to keep himself alive here. And with all the chaos ensuing right there, still holding down this snipe side, though. Finally taking down what for what I believe he was alive for almost a minute just keeping control over here And remember how that whole started that whole uh, whole section started He was the only one alive for his team He snuck over towards pyramid sky and basically ensured that his team did not get captured on So a huge play from Gilkey to break them out of that spawn trap and almost turn that into its own capture What do you think about this play here Walsh though? You've got lunchbox and another player pushing up from renegades, but they're gonna get completely stopped yeah, I think that was a great play. I think uh, Renegades eventually wants to just take over that snipe side of the map. Uh, in the event that the sniper's coming up, like right now, they don't want to overcommit to that flag. So I think uh, Lunchbox was hoping if he got Slayer 2 to get that pull simultaneously with that snipe grab. But the rest of his teammates kind of sat back and decided, hey, if we lost a member, no point in forcing this action. Let's get a sniper. Let's get a possible couple of easy kills and then get the flag pull. They've got two down. Make that three down for Wise Gaming. Neptune trying to get in position for the spawn trap, but he's going to get taken down by Demon D. A big kill from him. Lunchbox turns around to finish finish off Nebula, still Wise Gaming hanging on, stopping this flag run when it looked like they weren't going to be able to do anything here and commonly stopping it again. You saw the flag almost go up to that bridge, so that's a big stop there from commonly keeping that flag down low, stopping Renegades from easily going from that top bridge, and there you see it commonly with the flag return. Yeah, a bit of a blunder there from the Renegade side, just giving up a couple easy deaths as they are rallying that flag across the map and commonly playing that nice and smart, just getting those picks, seeing if any players panic. That's one of the things that this highest level of play is you, you feel like many of these players, they aren't going to give up their life without purpose to move that flag, but when they do, you better make them pay with their life. Commonly staying alive in the yard, just hanging around the rocks, making himself a hard target, taking the attention of a few players, trying to let his teammates push up here. He's got spotting the player, top rockets, also trying to finish off the one shot. He's going to be able to. That's APG going down. One thing I want to point out about that play strong side is commonly laid down a couple shots there, I believe it was on Ace over on that rocket side, and you notice how he instantly just turned away and then focused his attention on uh, Fountainside. The reason for that being is he did his damage. He did his part for his teammate. He realized, hey, I set you up for success over on the rocket side. I don't need to finish off that kill. I don't need to put in a third shot in that player. You have that 1v1 now, and I'm going to worry about myself on Fountainside because you know those other Renegades players were paying attention to that positioning. And now Renegades, they're making a move of their own here inside Wise Gaming's base. They're able to pick up a couple kills, but look at the flank there by Demon D. Another clutch play to stop the flag attempt from Renegades, Demon D, top rockets getting a few shots across the map with the Carbine. He's gonna get dropped incredibly fast there from veteran player Lunchbox. Now over to Ace, Ace trying to get some control of the snipe side, things are still heated here on this side of the map, going back and forth constantly. Able to finish off Nebula with the headshot. Finds a player up, up above. Can he get the kill? No, commonly will deny him, but commonly is going to go down as well. A lot of trading back and forth, a lot of chaos ensuing. But here we go, Nebula, he's on a flank. He's trying to find that right opportunity where his teammates get a couple kills to go for the flag. Yep, it's also a really good position too, because in this specific instance, it's the 620 mark. He doesn't want to prematurely grab this because Rockets and Sniper are both coming up. Now, I do not like this play at the moment, Strong Side. This might draw a little bit of attention, but right now you notice how Lunchbox, Neptune getting a couple kills across the map. They're going to possibly be able to roll this into a couple more kills, get those power weapons, and we'll have to see what happens, but looks like Nebula's still going to commit to this flag run. Yeah, interesting to see that flag run still uh, go for that because he could have maybe just tried to get the kill, and then once you get that kill, make that run. But look at that. What a kill from APG stopping DMD, getting that sniper. And I believe that snipe is going into the hands of Commonly. We're going to see if Commonly can do anything. Nice play from him as well. Yeah, I like how he rotated around that pyramid and decided if he was going to die, that's going to slide right off. But uh, that was a tough situation for Commonly right there. And that's kind of, uh, you have to wonder, 
if he had that extra backup in the form of Nebula. Instead of Nebula being all the way across the map, maybe they had that extra body over on Snipe side, something like that. You could try to uh, assume how that would have played out differently. But now look at APG has the Rockets, gets a double kill with it. He's gonna get this flag recovery with that triple kill. He almost has every weapon on the map, but eventually taken out. That flag is still, no, that flag will be returned. And there it is, Renegades putting in flag cap number one. Big plays from them. Neptune making his way out, getting some shots across the map. Perfect shots for him, hitting the headshot uncommonly. Helping out over back behind his base. You've got Wise Gaming with another charge right now. That's going to be two down for Renegades. They can take down Neptune and maybe get into the base. Probably not actually now because that time is all but gone. All the players from Renegades are spawning up. And now you're seeing Gilkey get caught off on his own. Yeah, unfortunately, he can't be pinching in that side once your location is known. Right there, Gilku is hoping for that one-on-one, -on -one, but not quite the case during that time. And going back to that flag cap from Renegades, I do think that kind of stemmed from that power weapon control. Maybe they didn't get exactly all the kills of those snipers and rockets, but they were able to acquire those kills around that six minute mark, get those weapons, and just even that double kill from APG was enough to seal the deal with the flag cap. Nebula is all the way back at his base right now, going in for the flag cap, oh, virtually untouched, and he's gonna tie the game up. Wise Gaming fighting, hanging on strong. The ninth seeded team going up against Renegades. And you know what? Nebula was probably trying to make that exact same play earlier. I do think it was the incorrect time, but a uh, great play from Nebula there. This just must be this tendency on this wise gaming team. He decides that he's going to be the one that flanks behind the lines. Hopefully, if there's a kill or two secured, he's going to move that instantly. So I do like the objective efficiency in mind. I just think you have to sometimes be mindful of the times you're doing it. Renegades slowing things up here towards Snipe side. Spots Nebula to take him out. Ace blocking the, or not blocking the corner, but back by his corner, trying to get some shots, clearing out his base. He's able to spot this player here, but he is going to go down. It looks like Wise Gaming, they might make another attempt at this flag. Nades come flying in. Commonly, he'll go down immediately and over to Gilkey, holding this top bridge. And we've seen Gilkey towards this snipe side of the map constantly throughout this game. It feels like every time we're on board with him, he is somewhere maneuvering around Snipe, around Bridge. Yeah, he's always maneuvering around there. The other thing I'm always noticing with Gilkey, it seems like he always has plasma grenades. Where is he grabbing all of these? Because every single time he's about to die or anytime someone's jumping up towards top catwalk, he's just going for that sticky right away. Now, in, in general, going for sticks uh, is a pretty low percentage play if you take it across the uh, every other situation you're trying to throw it. However, when you're in a narrow situation like that, someone clamoring up in a situation or somebody jumping up towards front catwalk, catwalk in a situation, where you can predict their path. It's not that risky of a play. Well, look at this. Renegades has the flag past that 50-yard line. Are they going to be able to keep it going? It looks like Demon D has other plans. He's got a few shots on a couple players. He's able to take down Lunchbox. Barely misses the double kill. Commonly is in position to potentially stop this flag as well, but that flag is going in quick. And Ace, he's going in for the cap, and they are going to be up two to one. Renegades continuing with that pressure, keeping that flag going, and what a rally from them. Yeah, great play by Renegades to rally that one back. One thing I didn't say at the start of this match, but I think usually holds true for any time there's an underdog team in the matches, the longer the game goes on, the better it is for the higher seeded team. Because generally when you have some sort of upset mechanic going on, uh, those players need to catch fire, they need to uh, not let the other team get uh, their step and get any sort of rhythm. And right now we're starting to see Renegades start to get their rhythm. They're, they're feeling very comfortable. They're getting control of the map. They're in very good positions. Uh, even though we saw that, that flag recovery right there, they just still seem to be in fairly good control. Yeah, two fall for Wise Gaming. Renegades still pushing up. Two down for Renegades now. Maybe Wise Gaming to see them make a move, but Lunchbox can spot a player here towards the bridge. Now taking his time. He's got a player pushing it. You can see that. That had to be right Gilkey, man. I saw another plasma grenade right there. <laughs> He's had to hit, be Gilkey. <laughs> not hit the plasma grenade. <laughs> but APG with the rockets again. That's two rocket kills. Taking down Nebula and Gilkey. And another triple at that for APG. Constantly picking up a lot of kills with the power weapons. Always, always, always. You, you see APG focus on rockets or sniper. He's always in the right spot at the right time. Now with the killing spree. I like this play. He's just taking up more ground. It looks like he also has defensive mindset because he was throwing that grenade back towards his base. Now, the one thing that Renegades can't do is just play pure defense. They need to take up more ground on the map. If they just sit back in their base, it's going to set Wise Gaming up in a situation where they can just get a couple slays, a flagpole, and an uncontested run back.
Yeah, not too much time commonly. You gotta work quick here. 35 seconds remaining. But APG, he has got a flank. He made his way around. Took down commonly. Ace taking down Nebula as well. Demon D doing everything he can to stay alive. They have to work quick right now. Wise Gaming, they are in the base. But Renegades is just sitting back. The nades come flying in. Demon D goes down. Gilkies goes down. And I don't think there's enough time here for this one. No, not at this point. They have to somehow get that flag out. Run all the way back with all those members watching the base. And I like this position from Lunchbox. The similar thing we talked about before is he can still play defensive towards his base. He can still help out over there. But don't just all be in the exact same location. Make Wise have to attack multiple locations. And Renegades will take game number one, but not in a dominant fashion. Oh, absolutely not. This is a series right here. We've got a series ahead of us. Renegades, number five seeded team versus the number nine seeded team, Wise Gaming. Wise Gaming definitely uh, showing some improvement from Columbus. And really, you can tell uh, that they put in some time and put in that practice. Uh, taking a look at Neptune there, sitting to the, to the right of Ace, or excuse me, to the left of Ace, uh, new to the scene, and uh, really kind of uh, made his uh, way into the scene because his individual skill got, uh, got realized. And we also may have missed a small overkill here in the form of commonly, so that X Games gold medalist right there putting on a performance here for his team. Taking a look at the stats, Nebula with 31 kills. Big plays from them, I mean, Wise gaming though, you got to give it to him right now. I mean, a few mistakes. What what do you think were the biggest key mistakes from oh, them? Oh man, uh, I don't think it was all Nebula there by any means. I I do think that one play was a slight misstep. I would have loved to see him possibly get a kill first, or uh, possibly step for power up during that time. But the rest of the time, like their one flag cap was due to Nebula. That great flank by him, getting that flag out, making the most efficient use of that uh, of those slays. So I really like that. Um, Gilkey did a good job holding snipe side. It did feel like in certain circumstances they would get a few kills, but I never felt like they pushed in to the Renegade space as a team. Like we were talking before over towards Red Rocket corner side, we saw Gilkey pushing in by himself and losing that 1v1 against Neptune. It's like, okay, sure, maybe we could think about that in this best case scenario. If you looked at it from a risk versus reward scenario, it's like, sure, Gilkey wins that 1v1, but that doesn't really translate into anything. He didn't have teammates over from uh, Snipe side that could help pinch in yet. He didn't have uh, any one position to get a, get a flag grab. So it felt like they were just not as organized, not pushing at the same places at the same times. And Renegades with their coach, Randa, uh, behind them, giving them the call outs uh, for power ups, power weapons, and any uh, possible miscommunication happening through the team. But here is the series layout. We are going into game number two, Slayer on the rig. You're gonna see camo, you're gonna see sniper. And I think if we see Wise Gaming, if we see Demon D, or if we see Gilkey really get a hold of this sniper, we could see them go off. Time and time again, we see teams that are the underdog. They make flashy plays. They, they're they just having a heater. And they make some massive plays happen and they pull out a W. Yeah, and uh, Renegades are absolutely gonna be looking to deny that power up in their hands. Um, this is one of those modes in games where you can shut down certain individuals, especially when it comes to a power weapon like that. Neptune getting the sniper in his hand, but it looks like it's gonna be going on over to his, I wouldn't say forward team, I was gonna say uh, his galaxy friend, Nebula. <laughs> <laughs> Nebula is gonna go down though, so that camo and sniper will not last too long. So over to APG trying to get his hands on that sniper as well, but both teams putting all their focus on the nest as that sniper still sits atop the nest and players beneath the nest, players across the map by Catwalk pushing in from engine two, neither team letting either one get that in their hands. Now over to Demon D as he's just taking it slow, playing a bit more passive right now, waiting for his teammates to potentially make a push. The game is early, they're down by three, but it is getting a bit quiet right now. Both teams are slowing down a bit, but it looks like we're seeing a push from Renegades over by Long Haul. Now Gilkey making a push by Camo. Can he finish off the kill? Yes, he's able to. That's gonna be three down for Renegades, and now we're all tied up. That is huge. Uh, they were in a situation where they were down by three, and of course, on, on paper, in theory, it's like, well, they have to make the move, right? They're down, they don't have the weapon, but it's all about pacing. It's whatever your team is most comfortable with. Depends if Wise Gaming's a, a team that's more comfortable starting the action and making pushes across uh, the map, or if they're comfortable sitting back, hiding, and waiting the other team to be the aggressor and then being reactive. 
I always think being the aggressor has some form of advantage. One is you get to practice yourself so much more online. You get to say, all right, we're going to make this push together. Let's, uh, let's get used to baiting and switching over on this side of the map or where people usually hide and hold this area. Whereas when you're reactive, it's sort of like, oh man, there could be a new game plan coming each time. And to somehow have every single movement fall in line perfectly, it's asking for a lot of reactive uh, decisions and quick decision making from you and your teammates. Renegade's starting to pull away, but camouflage is up. We'll see if anyone's going to put any attention towards that. Looks like Lunchbox, you see him flying out. Looks like a player from Wise is not going to be able to get that. And uh, it looks like someone from Renegades was able to pick up that camo. That's going to be APG. See if he can stay alive with this. We saw Nebula fall before with the sniper. Definitely something you want to have on your side, on your team, because it makes the other team play a little bit more frantic. You're worrying if there's a guy flanking. You're, you're just worried constantly that there could be a guy sneaking around you somewhere. Yeah, always that concern that you always want to know where Camel's at or hear where it's at. And I like how APG is kind of treating this Camel as, you know what? Obviously, I have a slight advantage with not with being more difficult to see, but he's not trying to go for a full-on flank or a full-on back smack. These teams, when they have a full setup, it's too tough. You have to give them more credit than that. So you have to pretty much just go in and treat it as like, all right, I'm going to be able to get the first couple free shots and then go, you know, work with your teammates to get that kill. Sniper is up. APG will go down. And You'll see Wise Gaming making a move. That's a Demon D with the sniper in his back pocket. He's got two teammates. That's Gilkey making a move on the spotted player. Demon D will finish off Neptune. And you've got Demon D waiting for a player just to peek. Do you like this player? Do you think he should have rotated away? I don't like standing over at Nest for that long. It looks like he's able to transition this into a couple kills, but I feel like the threat of someone coming from Whitehall or Engine 2, you can get pinned over in this position. That's very scary. Yeah, somehow he's just able to get away with this right now. But yeah, usually we'll see players rotate around the map, but it's working out for Demon D, and they're slowly making their comeback. Down by eight kills. Demon D, now this is where, this is where you're caught. This is where... Where do you run? Where do you go? You're going to lose the sniper out here, but there's only one bullet yeah, left, so bullet. I guess it's not too bad. So it looks like he ends up actually staying alive as a distraction for his teammate Nebula to pick off Lunchbox in that position. So they're, they're closing this gap a bit, but I, I do agree with you. That was uh, pretty interesting how he just stayed in that position. I would have seen, I would have expected to see him move to a more comfortable position, maybe over towards Carbine or towards Whitehall if they had control of the center of the map. Demon D able to stay alive, but actually he'll go down. That's All a four. four man down for wise gaming not picking up a single kill renegades slowing things up here and that's not a good sign either strong side uh not just the fact that they all four down but you saw demon d he had a full sniper he got to use all of its ammo yet his team after a minute of that play is down by 12 kills now so when it comes to like the neutral game, it feels like they're getting outplayed. When they when they had the sniper going on, they were they were starting to close that gap. They got down to six, but it shows that uh, the neutral game, which is uh, a bigger portion of the game, like you don't expect to have control of sniper or rockets a good majority of the time. You do want to roll those advantages, but whole point being is when these teams are on even footing, Renegades seem to be coming ahead in those exchanges. Neptune trying to find the player sneaking around engine. That player is going to be engine too, and they'll spot him, but he's got the help of his teammates. And this is where we're seeing Renegades really shine, constantly moving around as a unit. Now Neptune coming back to fight, but no, he's going to get back whacked by Nebula over to Nebula as they're trying to make the comeback. But this is where you can't be given up useless deaths. You can't make single kill trades. You're putting yourself in a position where the other team's got 36 kills. If you're making even just four or five single kill trades, the other team is so close to that victory. Yeah, that's one of the tough parts here about Slayer compared to the other game modes like CTF and Strongholds. At any point during that game, you uh, you don't put yourself in some insurmountable lead where you can't come back because you can get control of the map fully and bring that game back. Whereas Slayer is the exception because once you start to get close to that 40 kill mark, the other team can just play differently. They can they can just go for trade kills or they can hide in locations. It's really tough to get like an all four down while you all four live situation. Demon D trying to heat up here with that scatter shot, but it's not going to be enough as Renegades seem to have Wise Gaming's number, 28 to 40. Nebula with the sniper hits the headshot. They've got a lot of work to catch up here, though. He's got a teammate across the map, commonly will go down. And then Wise Gaming, you see them kind of around the map by themselves, and Nebula hanging back. We'll see if Wise Gaming is going to opt to play maybe a bit more passive, but that'll let Renegades just make an easy push from 
maybe out here by the open. Yep, coming right around underneath Catwalk. And it looks like Renegades, they're just an all-out charging machine. They know Wise Gaming is going to be playing slow. They know that they're going to be playing a bit more passive. Yeah, you'll notice this game kind of go through different paces at certain times when uh, when a team has an advance. They're going to want to keep that game fast. They want to continue to push when they have that advantage. However, when it gets to a stalemate situation where a team has that power up and they ideally want to slow it down, allow the opposing team to make mistakes or see what picks they can get. So right there, Renegade just smelling blood in the water. They're saying, hey, we got a couple kills right here. Just keep putting the pressure on them. Here we go, 48 kills. Renegade's moments away from closing out game number two. Make that 49 kills as Ace is going top tower. Neptune trying to finish it off, but it's going to be Lunchbox to pull off the 50th kill. And Renegade's take game number two, going up 2-0 in the series. Feeling confident, looking very calm. And like we said before, Lunchbox, Ace, APG, they've been in the scene for a long time. They know what winning is. And they've done it, yeah. they. This is business as usual for these guys. They, they're very comfortable on this main stage. I mean, they've played on the main stage or in finals more than some of these players have ever actually been on the main stage. Yeah, and Wise Gaming, this is a, this, this stage, playing with this many people watching, with the lights on them, this is new to them. They, Demon D took a long break. When I was talking to him in Columbus, he put in a lot of work. He took a long time to, to make it back up to the top. Qualifying for this event was huge, not just for him, but his entire team. This is their first time playing here at the Halo World Championship Finals. Yeah, and I think it's it's very rare that we see players take uh, long breaks and actually have great amounts of success. Like, sometimes they start to catch their stride, they start to place well again. I mean, myself, even I took a break from one event, um, and I started placing a little bit better, but it wasn't like I rose to the top and took first place in a bunch of tournaments after that. It was, um, it's tough to sometimes get back in there. Uh, you, you have usually a pretty small time uh, window of success in professional gaming in general and so it's impressive to see what he's been able to do after taking this break yeah going from game to game as well from halo to halo uh, not an easy feat to do very few players can have that much success snipe down another player uh one of the guys who's able to do that in lunchbox it's always still crazy for me to see it hasn't been too long uh that he hasn't been competing alongside his twin roy yeah but seeing him here sitting by himself alongside three other guys like he played in how many 30 40 plus tournaments easily with Roy? i mean yeah he he started competing in the halo two days so competing over that many different titles and reaching that much success in that many different titles is just unbelievable you you don't see that very much nowadays uh, i would love to hear the halo data hive stats on that like hearing how many different players have won on two different games versus three different games and so on and so forth. And Lunchbox is one of those players that, that carries the accolade. Here we go into game number three. Can Renegades close it out? Or can Wise Gaming potentially bring this series back in their favor? Lunchbox is going to go down early. Ace here in tower. Rockets are still up outside. He's going to be able to get camo. And Rockets go into the hands of Nebula. We'll see if they'll Catwalk's be secure. able to pick up Blue Bend as well. And yes, they are. So Wise Gaming able to put the first points on the board and Nebula taking it a bit slower. See if he's able to hit the rocket. He gets the hit ticks and pushes that player out of the red nest. And he's playing a bit a bit passive here, but it looks like it's just some good defense around the nest. Yeah, I mean, uh, zero for two with those rockets. I think he had the, his heart in the right place. He was saying, all right, I'm gonna sit over here on Red Ben's side. Hopefully someone makes a misstep and gives me a free rocket kill. Uh, but some of those rocket shots are tough to hit. I mean, unless someone's pushing in towards Blue Bend or Red Bend, you almost have to rotate over in through one of the bases or hit an amazing rocket shot in order to get those kills. Ace, he'll go down. Wise Gaming making a push up to Top Cat. Double kill from Commonly. That's a perfect kill. They'll make their way into the stronghold. Players did spawn up in Blue 2. Getting some grenades in as well, but it looks like Wise Gaming, they'll get the capture. But we are all tied up here. Renegades was able to take over Nest and Blue Bend. And now we have Commonly trying to decide where he is going to go. Making his way over towards the Rockets. They spawn in 30 seconds, just trying to, to get out of that Catwalk Tower area. Yeah, um, I, I think Catwalk Tower is exactly where you want to be holding, ideally, if you do have one stronghold. But uh, Kamali's mindset right there was, all right, my teams are probably going to spawn over by security or red anyways, and they can fulfill that Catwalk need. And I'm now going to rotate on over towards blue side or something along those lines. So that was a great rotation or early rotation from Kamali, just recognizing the situation. Oh, what a sneaky play by Kamali as they're holding the trip cap gotta love the sneaky plays 
taking down Ace and sitting back here at Blue Bend, just trying to keep some control. He's able to get some more shots here at bottom mid, just picking up Slay after Slay. That's going to be two down for Renegades and Wise Gaming. Picking up a third kill, so really picking up all the goodies now. They had rockets, now they have overshield. Camo as well, going into the hands of Connolly. So everything is in their favor right now. Yeah, Connolly's did a lap around the map. I mean, he, it's not Monopoly, he's not gonna collect 200 bucks, but he's gonna collect that, oh, that camo in that situation and luckily get control again of that catwalk, which is the most powerful one. You may have been confused as to why that player was shooting over there. He was hoping to negatively influence the spawns over towards that blue closet side. So they wanted to force spawns over at red. Uh, that was an interesting play because I'm not sure if uh, the actual shoot of the spawns has as much influence on it compared to just looking over there in that position and negatively influencing them just by your vision. Well, they're able to pick up two kills in the midst of that and commonly making his way back over to Blue Bend and they're able to get in that stronghold to stop the capture and get the reset. A killing spree from commonly looking for the double. It's got Demon D right there to help him out. And now we're seeing Catwalk and Nest go in favor of Renegades. Wise Gaming, they put all their efforts over towards that Blue Bend. Yeah, and that was an interesting split there, there from Renegades. Um, it's really tough to know what to do there. Like, hey, do you all four focus on one one stronghold because you don't want to split your attention too much? But I do think that if you try to send all four members to one stronghold here, if it's not Blue Bend, you're going to not have as much success because if you're all on catwalk, you just have too many different angles you can get hit from, from blue base, from red base, from, from red nest. Uh, same with red nest. It's just too small of an area for multiple players to occupy. Renegades having some trouble to finally eventually capture this blue bend, but it's 66 to 15. Wise Gaming really stepping it up here in game number three and trying to hang on. But look at this. Renegades is able to capture Catwalk. Can Nebula stay alive long enough? Yes, he does to capture the nest, keeping the stronghold favor in Wise Gaming. Constantly putting more points on the board. Demon D has rockets again, waiting for this overshield. Perfect timing. Yes, he gets it. Demon D is able to swoop in and stay alive despite all kinds of grenades going off and getting shot from all over the place. I like this rotation too. Not only does he help get control of this catwalk region, he gets control of this camo. And I like, uh, like I said, catwalk is such a good stronghold to have. The reason why it's so good is that it takes teams and players so long to rotate around and get over to catwalk. You have to go through some very exposed areas, whether it's blue catwalk side or red lower catwalk or flanking all the way through security. And at the same time too, you have the option at any moment, if you want to fly over towards Red Nest or Blue Bend, you can be there in a matter of a few seconds. Wise Gaming closing in here and possibly closing out this game any moment here. 78 to 25, but Renegades is able to get back control. As I say that, Wise Gaming, they do not let Renegades hold on to control very long. They are constantly just switching. Right as Renegades is capturing a stronghold, Wise Gaming, they're taking the one that they previously had. And now, Wise Gaming picks up a kill. Demon D laying down some shots here in tower. You see, I believe, across the map, that's going to be a player trying to help out at Blue Bend, but Renegades, they're going to stand strong and capture Catwalk and Blue Bend. I'm very impressed right now by this Wise Gaming team because generally after a significant loss like we saw in game number two, you'd expect them just kind of uh, curl over and die and be like, all right, well, we gave it a good run. We tried to give our best against Renegades. We tried to get ourselves in that series. That last game was just too much. But right here, they're showing that they are primed to bring this to a game number four and possibly still live in this series. Here we go, 90 points, 10 more points for Wise Gaming to close out game number three. Rockets coming up in just a second. I believe Wise Gaming have almost got every single rocket this game. It's 93, 94 points. You see Demon D's just waiting for the players to push out from red. And he can just watch the icon in that right side of your screen to see if anybody makes a move on Ness. Yeah, time is on his side. And he also has the timing on that overshield, which he last acquired. He's now going to grab that. And that's certainly going to be able to close Jenny. this one out. No, he does, he does not, not get it to time. close it out. He's barely misses it, but he's right here to pick up a double kill. Going for the triple, he's charging in. He's going for it, hits the triple. He's got his teammate Nebula right here, and they're gonna capture that quickly and close out game number three. Wise game, hanging on by a thread. You know what, they're pumped up, but one thing that's a good sign to me is the fact that they're not just going crazy. They're not treating it as if they won the series. They're, they're saying, all right, we got a game. We've been here before. Let's bring this back game by game, moment by moment. Yeah, they. Honestly, after game one, they looked really good. Game two, uh, 
definitely not their best performance, but game three, let's take a look at the stats here. I believe that was Demon D going off with 20 kills. Gilkey with 15 kills on top of that. Absolutely dominating this squad, almost doubling their kills. 53 kills total from Wise Gaming and only 27 from the Renegades roster. Yeah, that is an incredible amount of out slain, so it's no surprise the score is gonna also reflect that here on Strongholds. I mean, when you get twice as many kills, you just have so many more options across the map. You can do anything. Yeah, you're just running around. People are sitting in death screen. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna do what I want. I'm gonna take camo, I'm gonna take OS. Felt like every time we saw Demon D, Ace, commonly picking up camo, picking up OS. Uh, I like the one play from Demon D where he had overshield. He was going for camo. Could have doubled up. Yeah. Could have doubled up. I just started thinking that, like, what's that Step Brothers quote from the movie? There's like, so much room for activities now. <laughs> After you have so many slaves, you can do whatever you want. Oh, man. <laughs> Demon D, though, definitely a class act here. Definitely a team player, letting his teammate pick up that camo and just being a strong force here at the Halo World Championship Finals. We are going into game number four. Capture the flag on Fathom. And we'll kick things off with Gilkey as he's making his way towards top mid. We've got camo top middle, railgun bottom middle. First to three caps wins for the team that has most caps at the end of the 12 minutes will take home the victory. Neptune will, or APG will get the best of Gilkey there with the help of Neptune and be able to acquire the camo. I like that. He's just laying down a few shots, being a presence here in top center. I'm a little surprised they didn't shoot Gilkey again right there because his his, his position's already been sniffed out. Do some damage, set your teams up, teammates up for success, and then push on out. And what kind of shots were that? Was those some pre-fire shots going towards bomb center? Someone's got eagle eyes over on the other team. Without a doubt, I mean, camo pretty tough to spot here across the map on Fathom, but Demon D now getting some shots, trying to clear out his base. He's able to take down Ace with a reversal, hits the headshot. Now moving his way towards bottom mid, spots APG, able to get a few shots while APG had the light rifle at that as well. So Demon D getting the best of APG, almost finishing the kill. They're having a, an elongated battle here around bottom mid. Lunchbox goes down, Nebula goes down, and here we go, APG and Demon D fighting again. And the man who retired and came back gets the best of APG. He is back. He is in good form right now as he's helping this wise gaming crew bring this series back here in game number four against Renegades. I like those shots against Lunchbox. Now he's going to push on over, put the squeeze on over the Renegades base. Uh, but at the same time, I believe his flag was just pulled a moment ago. That was a unique situation, so there must have been some sort of flanker. But I like this aggressiveness. Why is Gaming instead deciding that they're just going to be the aggressors and go for a flagpole? So right there, DMD grabbed this one. Run towards Bob Sorry, but APG is going to put a stop to that. All right. We'll see the control of Wise Gaming, their top mid. Hanging back at their base as well. That flag is still out. Maybe Demon D can get there. I believe Demon D is able to pick up a kill. That's two down as well. That flag still sitting bottom mid. A player, two players flying across the map from Renegades. Wise Gaming able to get the flag in their front door, but can they keep this flag going? That flag is ready. It's sitting on pretty much the flag stand right here. And Connolly is able to get flag cap number one. And after that flag cap, I want to hear the comms. I want to hear the hype from this squad. So let's jump into a listen in with Wise Gaming. Did they get camo? Did they get camo? Yeah, they have camo. They have camo. He's at camo retreat. Camo retreat. Camo's our. Yep. Camo's our retreat. Another another big door. Camo's two shots retreat. In our pit, guys. Blue pit. Blue pit. Watch your elbow, guys. They're gonna push in our elbow. Our pit weak. Camo's retreat. I stay alive in our gen. I'm I'm pulling top of the wall. Do you, Danny? Do you, Danny? Our both weak. No, our core with Rayo, dude. I died. What's going? What's going? Are they coming in? I can't see. In our elbow. In our elbow. Camo's our porch. Camo's at the engine, dude. On Hammy. Camo's one shot engine. Two engine. Camo's set. Fucking kill Hammy. Running river. Running river. Two dead, two dead. Bottom middle, bottom middle rail, one shot. That's gonna be three. Okay, black, rail set, three dead, we have a read. We have a read. Okay. Is there a bridge read time in the rail? It was, uh, LR. Alright, I'm gonna flank through bottom okay. middle here. You're together at tree, you're together at tree. Top middle, top middle, one shot. Top middle, go. Guys. One shot. Good shit. Live, live, live. Guys, they're from base, they're from base. It's on the top of 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 the top to our flag right now. In our gen, in our small door, I think. Our elbow, our elbow, our elbow wing, our elbow wing on Gilk. In our gen, Gilk. In our gen, our small door. Our port. Our tree, dude. What shot top, man? Yo, we got an OE, OE, that's OE, OE. I'm going to the elbow, I'm going to the elbow right now. I got to need it out, you're by yourself. I got to need it out. This is it, Danny. All right, we got to back, go back to our flag, go back to our flag. Out of our base, man. Yeah. So our gen, weak, one shot. There you heard the comms from Wise Gaming, but Renegades puts in a flag cap 
as we come back from that listen in tying up the game one to one wise gaming calling out a lot of things saying uh, wait for help wait for help back up they're running flag they have camel every little detail yeah every little detail but i wonder how much of it was taken to heart it felt like uh they were saying some but not following their own advice they're saying we need to stay alive or don't do this but you'd see some overextension some some easy, easy deaths given up during that last exchange so that was uh during that last flag run renegades not only were able to secure that flag cap but they also were able to get control of the map during that same time too lunchbox able to get the headshot on demon d as he's trying to make that flag run towards bottom middle does spot a sneaky player here hiding in his base lunchbox trying to creep around a little bit of ring around the rosie going on here can he finish off the kill and a big trade by nebula as well so both huge flags trade. back at home yeah huge huge trade now lunchbox had the advantage in that situation so he first off should not have had to trade his life however during that time Nebula's life is more valuable. Nebula had to travel all the way across the map in order to get to that Renegade's base. So generally a trade of a one for one with uh, one player from your own base with an opposing player who is at your base is worth it. With that being said, he definitely misexecuted. Without a doubt, APG is able to stay alive. He has two shots in the railgun. That flag's moving. Now APG getting flanked. He's going to go for the turnaround railgun shot. Not going to be able to connect, but he'll be able to get that trade. Neptune on the return, and that flag will get sent back home. Neptune taking it slow. Teammates are spawning up. He'll make his way around towards the red water sink, going over towards the tree house. But he also had great repositioning there. You notice how he returned that flag, and uh, a player from Wise is basically going to assume, all right, someone's got to be pushing through that dip over to our silo right now. So he just repositions, runs back over towards his silo. Unfortunately, was taken out in that situation. But whole point being is the mind games that these players are going through. They just don't want to give any sort of credit to their team. They don't want to let their positions be known. They want to catch them off guard with two-on-ones on different parts of the map. Lunchbox goes down. Camo coming up in 30, about 30 seconds. We're seeing Ace make a move back to his base because they are getting sandwiched right now by Wise Gaming. Wise Gaming pushing up. Lunchbox trying to spot that call out from Ace, but nowhere to be found. And Gilkey making a move in, get some help. APG's able to take him down. Demon D with the railgun. Camo in 15 seconds. Yeah, I would like to see what he can do with this combo. He is well known for his uh, power weapon slash power up control and prowess. Luckily, not I wouldn't say luckily, getting that kill but I'm a little concerned as to why he just ran away that quickly. I mean, Camel was coming up right then and there. Maybe they wanted to divide the, the power-ups and power weapons, but as I looked over on our quad screens here, I saw Ace was actually able to get that burn. So you have to wonder about that miscommunication there within the Wise Gaming team. Was their coach not on top of that Camel? Was Demon D not aware? There had to have been something going on there because I'm sure if Demon D knew Camel was coming up, he would have stayed right up top center. Yeah, getting that Camel railgun combo is so lethal commonly trying to stay alive in the base as well. That railgun's gonna go into the hands of the Renegades. It's player after player falling from Wise Gaming. Ace now staying alive in Red Treehouse. Trying to finish off the one shot. He's gonna find Nebula and take him down. But look at this. Renegades, they're on a mission. They're moving in and they're moving in quick. What a name hitting Ace there as he's making his way into the base. A big kill taking down Ace, and that flag is on the move. Yeah, people may be wondering, why did Ace charge in there where he's a, he, when he was a bit weak? He wanted to go inside that base, block the spawns to ensure that his teammates could push in and get that flag pull out. He also wanted to be a part of that distraction. He wanted to force the wise gaming members to spawn over on Silo, and here comes that Silo push now. This is all stemming from that play from Ace, who pushed in towards that engine too, and he now eventually reaps the benefits of that play as he gets the cap number two for Renegades. Renegades making that one look a little too easy. Definitely focusing on those slays and making that flag cap very smooth all the way home. Wise Gaming, they've got four minutes. There's a lot of time to bring this back in their favor and they are moving quick already. You see Nebula flying into the base. Wise Gaming about to get a flag pull. That flag is on the move. They take down APG. Can they pick up another? A nice flank here from Nebula as that flag is on the move. That's two down. Make that three down. Almost four Renegades are panicking too. Renegades. Renegades were panicking. They tried to get their own separate pull at the same time as a distraction, but in the end, they gave up more death because of it. Nebula just tossed that flag in, getting the capture assist and going back on the offensive. Tied up two to two. Wise Gaming, they need this flag cap. They have to win this game to take it to a game five. Renegades trying to hold strong, but Wise Gaming is putting on the pressure. They are not slowing up. Lunchbox goes down. 
Are they able to take down one more player? Yes, they are. That's two down for Renegade. And on top of that, commonly with the camo. He gets spotted, though. The Eagle Eyes, again, spotting the camo player. And APG able to finish that off. And that's a huge weight off of Renegade's shoulder, realizing that they now have that camo out of the way. They can safely push on out without fear of any sort of random backsmack or something going terribly wrong. So I like this play, but I'm a bit hesitant. They're playing a bit too defensive. Look at how Ace just instantly goes right back from Treehouse side. He has, uh, I guess he decides to opt for guarding his flag from his own base and getting spawns there rather than going towards Treehouse and hoping his teammates don't spawn at Silo. Yeah, right now, Wise Gaming, they're keeping up that pressure. Yeah, they might be uh, losing these, uh, these battles, but it, right now, it really doesn't matter. Wise Gaming is going to spawn right back up at their base, and Renegades, they're just sitting really far back. Now we're starting to see Renegades move up. Ace here in the treehouse. Nades coming in from everywhere, commonly with some excellent grenades to take him out. Gilkey with a perfect on APG. Going for the dub. He's got Nebula there to help him out. Demon D, you've got all four players from Wise Gaming flying oh. in, but Nades right just in the doorway. Maybe they were bundling up too much. They were bundling up too much, and then even so, even if it's just a single player pushing through that doorway, you know the players are spawning there. They're gonna spawn with frags, and that porch area is one of the easiest spots to grenade. That's why when you saw Ace before, when Ace made that move on the Wise Gaming base, he sprinted past the porch. He sprinted past that death trap and went in through the front window instead. Whereas you saw multiple members of Wise thinking that they had that timing opportunity that you thought they thought that they could get there faster oh, than the no. grenades were going to be there. Lunchbox gets assassinated. That's a four-man sweep. All four down for Renegades. Wise Gaming with control with the railgun at that. Camo is coming up right now. It's up. We'll see if any player is on that to make a move. And you called this earlier, Walsh. Maybe their coach or maybe nobody was communicating, but it looks like Gilkey was able to get that camo. Demon D trying to play sneaky. He will get some help there, but Gilkey dies with camo as well. Yeah. Uh, that's a bit surprising from the Wise Gaming side because they had all four down, like you said before. They had their choice of any positions they want. They knew that Renegades were going to spawn in their base. So they set up and then they gave up two free kills from that. I believe they, they, they had two uh, deaths and only one kill from it. We're at under 50 seconds remaining. Nebula's oh. got the railgun, and he's trying to make a sneaky play. Two players go down from Renegades. This might work out, but it's a 2v2. Demon D and Commonly go down. He's got to pick up a kill. Three players down. He was the last one. Player spawning up next to him. He hits the railgun shot. An amazing kill by Nebula. That flag is still alive, but there is a player sneaky behind them. Lunchbox trying to stop the flag. They get the touch. There's three down for Renegades, and that flag is still moving. Commonly going for the overkill, but that flag for Wise Gaming, they've got it back in the base. That flag is sitting out in front of Renegades base as well, so it's in an area that's going to be hard possibly to get a touch. Gilkey checking his six, checking everywhere. This is going to overtime. Three minutes added to the clock. The next cap is going to win. If Wise Gaming do this, we are going to game number five. Fathom is such a scary standoff situation. You can have so many different states in the game where you're bringing this flag. I like this play from Gilkey. Instead of deciding to be on his own at his own base, he wants to push on up, see if he can help a little bit, see if he can be closer to some teammates, but he's going to continue to move back and forth. As soon as the position is given up, he realizes that he can get in a one-on-one, -on -one and he does not want to play that risk versus reward game. He doesn't want to put himself in a situation where he has to win a 1v1 in order to keep his flag alive and his team alive in this tournament. Yeah, Gilkey trying to make sure no player is flanking him. Just moving that flag around, not dropping it, so they can't see that location of the flag. Big, definitely a smart play. Ace now looking across the map, but this is big. Lunchbox has camo. He has an opportunity to make an extremely clutch play here in the last moments of this game. But what he's likely going to do is he's more than likely going to go for some slays first instead of some just random desperate recovery. So right there, he's getting a kill on Gilkey. He realizes the flag is not going to be fully safe. And right there, Commonly actually tries to toss that flag out, realizing that his base is no longer oh, safe. There's two members oh. of Renegades in there. That flag, it looks like it will be returned, and yes, it will. Renegades return the flag and get the cap taking game number four. Moving on into the championship bracket. Definitely feeling a sigh of relief. Wise Gaming did not make it easy for them. They put up a hell of a fight, pushing them to the absolute limits. And you got to give credit to this Wise Gaming crew. They came in as the underdogs. And they, they, they played at their best, and they really improved.
from what we saw in Columbus. Yeah, they, they did a great job bouncing back during that series, just uh, being down 2-0 against a squad like Renegades and to be able to take away that game three in such dominating fashion, double, you know, getting twice as many kills throughout that game was incredibly impressive. Even this last one, it was near even in slays. Uh, I was looking at 83 kills to 87 I'm seeing on our prowler here. So nearly even in slays and clearly it, was, it showed in the score too as we went to a overtime game where just that standoff decided the game. Yeah, it all came down to the wire there. That standoff, uh, incredibly, incredibly clutch play there by Lunchbox securing that camo. And that really puts, uh, that put Wise Gaming uh, kind of like in a defensive mode. They, they were worried, where's this camo guy coming from? So uh, veteran play by a veteran player, Lunchbox. Absolutely, so just a bit too much there from the Renegade side. I mean, they looked very strong, but you even said too, it was more like a sigh of relief. It wasn't like this cheering sort of thing because they, I think they, they expect more out of their team. They didn't come into the world just to say, all right, we need to make it to top eight. They have the higher sights set. They want to get top four. They want to get top two, I bet, even for Renegades. That's, that's their goal. Now, the odds of that happening, I don't have the answer to that question. But um, based on the way they're playing right there, I, I think they probably want a more impressive score line uh, during that last match. Yeah, without a doubt. Well, we'll see Renegades move on. But we do have an interview with the winning team, Lottie. We're going to pass this down to you do indeed lunchbox you are through to the championship bracket now what a game that was i just want to touch upon the two ctf games the first one you guys took almost half the time in the game to get that first cap it seems to be like you were struggling a little bit but then something clicked what happened yeah they were playing a uh, good halo and i don't know that we were playing our best but yeah it was hard fought games every game so i'm glad we were able to pull that w out and uh, move on to championship bracket how do you come back from something like that in mid-game? Is it, is it a mental thing? Do you say, right, guys, we really need to get our heads down now? Yeah, I mean, we've all been in that situation before. So, I mean, it's all about just keeping your composure and, uh, you know, going through the motions like we practice leading up to this event. So, um, yeah, proud of, proud of that performance. Uh, definitely going to have to uh, pick it up a little bit, but we'll uh, hopefully do that. And, of course, the, the last CTF game we just saw, the one that won the entire game for you, um, Wise were having some amazing shots. They really were battling with you guys. Talk to me what happened. Yeah, that game was super back and forth, uh, you know, tied up 2-2 going into overtime. So um, super fortunate that we were able to get the kills at the end, get that return and uh, secure our spot in the uh, championship bracket. And how are you feeling going forward now into the championship bracket? We've got some amazing teams coming out and competing. How are you feeling for the rest of the day? Yeah, I'm feeling good. You know, we've uh, this was our goal going into uh, this tournament, getting into championship bracket. Um, so, you know, we're going to have to pick it up and hopefully play our best Halo here coming up. I'm sure you will, and I can't wait to see it. I'll see you a bit later on. Golden Boy, it's back to you at the desk. Thank you so much, Lottie and uh, Lunchbox there. You know, really just trying to keep it calm, cool, and collected as he should. That was a very rough game uh, for Renegades there. Wise, a team with so much upset potential, and they proved why they were able to do that, especially when you look at that Eden Strongholds game. Uh, you know, with that said, it was uh, Renegades and, and really, a, I mentioned it before, just a battle of the vets at the end there in that CTF uh, Fathom game that had really determined uh, who would get that W. But let's take a look at game one because Lottie mentioned it in the interview. It was a long time before Renegades were able to get that first cap. Wonderboy, I want to start with you. What are some of your thoughts uh, from what you saw in that game? As soon as I saw this game one go to Renegades, I thought this series was over, to be honest with you, because this is probably Wise Gaming's best game type. Don't forget, they beat uh, Armada in Columbus in the wildcard bracket under two minutes or something like that on this map. And, and they are seriously good at Colosseum. Renegades did such a good job controlling the power weapons and, and nullifying the electrifying playstyle of Wise Gaming here on this map. And I, I, honestly, if you yeah. don't win that game type, if you are Wise Gaming, I don't think you had a chance of winning the series. Speaking of electrifying, though, can we talk about Demon D? This yes. guy was... Right. He, you know, in Columbus, it was really about Gilkey and his superior slaying. Uh, he was just really coming up clutch for the team. But Demon D in this one, man, so impressive from him. Clutch, you're so familiar with this guy. You won a national championship with Demon D. You know that this is just what you had expected out of him. Yeah, ever since I heard Demon was back in the, in the scene, I've really been paying a lot of attention to him. I know he hasn't been able to get the play since he's won it, but I have been watching, and I am very impressed to see how he's made a progression through Halo 5. He's really coming to his own. 
I would love to see Demon D continue to pursue this career and have an opportunity to continue playing against these teams because you saw so many times in this in this series the demon d kind of took over like this game three demon d completely takes over goes gets the rockets gets a few kills gets the overshield gets a few more kills gets his team camo gets two different triple kills throughout the entire game i mean he was on fire and i love seeing that out of him because when i team with him in halo 3 he was one of the I, I think he was one of the best players in halo 3 especially in 2009 2010 he, he killed it too i mean this guy has the ability to play with anybody in the world, and he's shown it on this stage. Yeah, he went plus 13 that game. And what I liked about it is that he loved to try and manipulate the spawns one way or another. I think Walsh, you said it before, where he was shooting certain areas of the map just to maybe try and uh, manipulate it a little bit. Now, I'm not too sure if that actually helps in any way. And even if it did, it's a very, very small percentage. But I think the great thing about him is the fact that he's flanking his areas really early. Like, most people normally shoot them on spawn to keep them at bay. But instead, he flanks them whilst they're at bay. So at least that way, he has an incredible advantage not just getting the first shot like most people would looking from across the map but he's got him from behind straight afterwards and th this top tier halo comes down to such small minute details and little things like that change the entire outcome of the game so it's and demon d finds any advantage he can find and takes it and that's what he needs to do against these teams that are better than his team and i'm not saying that demon d's teammates didn't come to play because we saw plays out of gilkey commonly we saw plays out of them all they have what it takes to compete with these top teams. If they were in a different pool, I think they could have advanced. Yeah, very true. In a different situation altogether, I mean, this is, in my mind, a different squad than what we saw in Columbus. In Columbus, it was like, oh, cool, you know, Demon D, he's, he's back at it. Gilkey, awesome, good to see him here as well. Uh, and then we got down to those wild card games, and that's when we started to see what this team was made out of. They put in a lot of work leading into this event, and it, it certainly showed, and I agree with you, Clutch. I think that this team has the the ability to be able to contend it, with the top eight be in the top eight they are that good uh it just unfortunately for them they ran into a very ambitious and hungry renegades team that had a goal which was to make champ racket one suppose point. you could say that uh, renegades wised up in that series oh no i, I wouldn't say that wise no wise gaming no, no. That, that, you would wise. say that but not us that's that's number two that's, that's number two third strike Sorry, and you're right. gone <laughs> third strike you're out of here okay okay so i'm gonna have i'm, I'm gonna have your father pick puns. you up by your father i'm talking about lethal because he's All right. your daddy okay that so am i <laughs> <laughs> on a serious note <laughs> I made you laugh <laughs> we've only talked about why so far renegades is moving on a championship bracket and apg's Playing mediocre at best. APG, you got to step it up. I, yeah. I'm like the biggest APG fan in the world, like a little brother to me. I need more out of you, man. You've won tournaments. You've you've been in the top two, the top three. But where are you right now? You're in the top eight. Like, you got to play better than that. That you could have just gone to game five and lost that series and not be playing anymore for the rest of the weekend. Like, APG, oh, you got to play better. right there. Actually, he's shaking his head <laughs> at you. Play better, he's shaking his head at you. <laughs> What? You got to focus less on that hair and more on your gameplay. <laughs> I see him he's shaking he's his head away. as he's walking, he's walking away. away. Oh, I wish we had a camera on that. <laughs> that would have been phenomenal. He knows I mean well, but I'm being dead serious. Like, APG's been one of those players throughout his Halo career that can take over a game. Oh, yeah. APG, I've teamed with him so many times, and so many times I was like, yeah, thank God I had that kid on my team. Yeah, I remember seeing all those uh, ESPN top 10 plays with Chris Bucket, and they were just, you know, so good. And APG lighted all of those top 10 plays uh, back in the day. The guy's uh, ability and skill is... He he has it, you know. I, they just need to they just need to to click. I, I need more. to see that APG the rest of the weekend. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm I just a bit worried though. I just feel like they hesitated a lot in that game. Yeah, sure he plays slow methodical plays, but he saw players like Ace where it would barely leave his first half of the base. And don't get me wrong, I know you've got to set up like defensively in a lot of uh, scenarios, but the thing is though, uh, with Wise, they kept throwing one guy at the situation and for some reason that brought their whole team back. So I think they just need to change their priorities a little bit. Hopefully going into this weekend now, especially for today, they can actually change that. But you know, these teams now, they can change things up just after one series. So they're probably gonna talk about it afterwards and you know, decide on their priorities in game. Very true, very true. That's why these players are the cream of the crop in in Halo Esports, uh, but we still have another in our last group 
play game here on the main stage before we go into the championship bracket. And this is going to be another big deciding matchup. It will be Elevate versus Vex, NA versus EU once again. Elevate has eliminated the EU team before when they played in Fuse in Orlando, but this time Vex need to answer the call. We did get a chance to talk to Big Daddy Riots as he got ready for this matchup.